So now, um, I open the debate and uh, the United Kingdom should leave the European Union. So who is in favor of that? Please, uh, or against, please raise your card. Come on, all of you. Okay, so the majority are basically against the idea of UK leaving the European Union. Okay, so now I call the, the first speaker of the proposition team. It looks like we have a very difficult job today. To pro okay, so thank you for the... Uh, it's here? Okay. Oh. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for the floor. Uh, as for well, the proposition, uh, we should uh, we are proposing that the UK should uh, leave uh, the, the European Union. We have a very difficult job here because this debate is very wide and it's very important. But nevertheless, we will focus on two main arguments. And um, before that, I will uh, start with why should uh, the UK leave the European Union? Uh, what does it mean leaving the European uh, Union? And then uh, focus on two main uh, arguments. Why should we go, uh, should the UK go global and not stay regional? And then uh, that the UK would have more benefits, economic benefits, leaving uh, the EU than staying inside. So. First thing first, um, why should UK uh, leave the uh, European Union? And I'm going to focus here on uh, on a few facts. We, we've seen lately that uh, the European Union kind of failed. The European project failed. And what does it mean? It doesn't it, it, it doesn't deliver what it, what it promised. And um, we believe that uh, the. Uh, that uh, for the for UK people for Britain, okay, um, it has uh, UK has more to lose than uh, than to offer. And let, let's think, uh, let's look at some facts. Uh, since 2008, the the UK contribution to the European uh, budget has tripled. Uh, then. Uh, uh, looking at uh, it, it, it has been said that the European Union will offer growth and prosperity for uh, its members, but in fact it's not like that because if we are looking at the, the GDP increase uh, in Western Europe where UK is part, it's only 1.5 while you know, for other countries in Asia for example, it's much bigger uh, around 6, uh, 6%. We, we've seen that the uh, European project, you know, it's very, it's very big, very wide, it's very difficult to take decision, uh, the uh, and is not very coherent. And also the UK citizens are not very happy with what the European Union is delivering right now. So that's why we are proposing that the UK should leave the European Union. And what does it mean? Leave it means to uh, give up on, his, uh, on its full membership in, uh, in the European Union. And this, of course, doesn't mean like the uh, UK would uh, turn back to the European Union, no. Instead, it means that we want to negotiate an agreement that we will still go on with uh, economic trade and we try to get most of benefits. So if there are some other countries that are not part of the European Union, like Turkey, like Norway, who are still having a very good relationship and take the advantages of being... Uh, of having close relationships. So I'm going to go uh, further on my uh, main arguments. Why should we go global and not stay regional? Why should UK choose to leave the European Union? Because, uh, as I said before, the European Union is, uh, it doesn't deliver what it promised. And what, what does it mean? It means that it doesn't have enough power to decide and stand by itself you know, with one single and coherent voice. So, uh, and we, we have very, uh, two clear examples here. We have the, the migrant crisis and the, the, the war in Syria where European Union has totally failed to, to, to take a position. Instead, we had what? We had the position of the European Union, the position of UK, the position of France. So basically, we are, we are seeing here that it's kind of a, a competition and it's not very coherent. While in terms of... Um, so to go a bit wider in global, uh, how uh, the European Union is represented here, it's also kind of, let's say, competition, even if not the right word, because we have the high representative of the European Union, then we have uh, the Prime Minister, uh, who are coming sometimes with statements that uh, are not uh, in the same line. So that's why we believe that this is the chance for, uh, that the UK has a chance to, uh, to go global, to stand by itself, and uh, to, uh, to defend its, uh, its uh, values and uh, its interests. Interest. Um, so, um, 
And this way, uh, UK would have a more bargaining power and would have the capacity to 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 to, imp uh, to better impose that in, in the international area. Even though the benefits might not seem well, immediately. In long term, it would, it would be more benefits. And talking about this, I want to focus more on the economic benefits. So let's think about uh, trade. You, one might say that leaving the EU would uh, make the uh, would have real negative um, effects on uh, UK uh, in terms of uh, economic. Uh, in terms of economy, which is which is not true, because you know n right now in this global world there are new sources of growth uh, with which uh, the EU has failed to to make an agreement. And I'm going to give you an example. Since the since the Treaty of Lisbon, uh, the EU has the pow had the power to negotiate some trade deals with uh, with China with some other new uh, economic uh, powers, which has totally failed. Since then, it signed only with Canada, while a single independent state, uh, a nation like Canada, and the same time has uh, negotiated around sev 17 uh, trade agreements. So, therefore, the UK in this will have more power to, to negotiate these trade uh, agreements and will have more uh, economic benefits. It's over? No? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, having said, we, we believe that the EU project failed and the uh, uh, UK itself would gain much more than being alone. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Now I'm calling the first speaker of the opposition team. Okay. Hi, so um, the proposition is to leave the EU. Um, the government just said that the EU doesn't bring anything to the UK that they can live better without it. But actually, 50% of their exports are for the EU. So if if they are not in the EU anymore, they will okay. They will try to have other um, deals with the EU, but according to their position right now, it's kind of really negative with the EU. Um, I mean, the EU won't won't be really. I mean, they won't reward such a position. So the first point was going global. Uh, okay. The European Union is not um, hindered that. For example, Germany is actually, their export are three times more than the export of the UK with China. So that's not a point. And actually they will um, lose a lot of their negotiating power if they are not in the European Union anymore. And for the, the economic benefits, so first there are all the, the single market is something really important, so they need to stay in. And even if they, if they quit, they won't sell some trades, but there will still be a cost for the, this trade. No way is paying a lot of money to have agreement with Europe. And um, we're not talking, we have to talk also about the foreign direct investment, yeah. Is Norway paying more or less than the 17 billion euros per year, which currently represents the net UK contribution as a member? It's far less than the UK, but per head, it's still a lot for the Norway. Um, so I was talking about the foreign direct investment, which are really important for the UK. Um, especially for industries and um, fin the financial sec for industries and the financial sector too, and those investments are really mobile. So with the uncertainty of a Brexit, they can go. This, invest this investment can go abroad, and that will be a huge cost for the UK and especially a loss of jobs for many of the Britons. Um, and the la my last point is also that um, Scotland has said that if the UK leaves the European Union, Scotland will try to leave the UK. So is it a great idea for the European Union, for, sorry, for the UK to lose Euro the European Union and Scotland? I, I'm not, I don't think so. It will be a lot of uncertainties for all the businessmen there, and especially for all the people, the population will, will lose a lot of jobs and all, a lot of securities because they, the UK also wants to um, ease a lot of regulation. But those regulations are also really good for the population, especially with the food standards, the uh, product safety, the environment, 
and all the all those social benefits that they have with the European Union. That's my point. Okay, now I'm calling the second speaker of the proposition team. Okay, so thank you for the floor. Um, I will actually uh, start my speech by doing some rebuttal uh, on the last arguments bring by, brought sorry, by the opposition team. And I will then um, address uh, the political aspects of this debate. Uh, I will start with the, Euro, the, the case of Euroscepticism in uh, UK, which is actually fair high. Um, I will then go to migration. Uh, and then I will move to a cultural point of view um, of the debate, uh, talking about how Britons don't really feel European. Um, so some kind of rebuttal. So uh, the opposition team told us that, uh, well, actually they gave us the example of, of Germany and um, the fact that Germany actually exports a lot uh, to China, namely, which is, of course, true. But I don't see how this uh, could be actually really apply to Britain because we know that Britain is far different uh, economically uh, from, from Germany. They have nothing uh, to do actually because, um, because the, the British uh, economy is far less regulated. Actually, it's one of the less regulated members of uh, the European Union. And uh, we are talking also about negotiating some FTAs and this kind of thing. So it's not um, it's not only about trade flows that we are uh, talking about now. Um, so, to start with the political point of view, we know that there is currently uh, in the UK a great rise of Euroscepticism. Actually, the, the, the figures are... Uh, made this very clear. Um, at the last election in 2014, uh, the European elections, uh, the UKIP, so the main uh, Eurosceptic uh, party of UK, uh, raised to, um, uh, rose, sorry, to 26% uh, of the votes. So I think this is a clear um, sim symptom that actually Britain's don't really uh, feel European. Actually, Eurocentrism is raising steadily um, as from um, be, be, uh, before the, the economic crisis, uh, which actually made things even worse. Um, so uh, there are also this last poll uh, that was conducted by Sturvation that showed us that 43% uh, of Britons uh, actually wanted UK to leave the EU. So that shows us actually that public, and there was 40% that thought that uh, UK should leave, should uh, stay, sorry, in the European Union. So we see that public opinion in UK is actually against uh, the fact that, um, that Britain should stay in the European Union. So if democracy is so important for European Union, actually I think they should let the population decide for their own country. And that's, this is why this referendum coming in 2016 is so important. Um, yes. Um, can you please explain how this uh, poll evolved from the beginning of the Brexit up to these days? If there, is there any difference in these opinions Excuse that me? we should leave? Is there any difference in these opinions that UK should leave or no EU from the beginning of the Brexit debate up to today? Yeah, actually, we saw that uh, um, as from uh, last year, the, the numbers uh, were actually uh, far lower because um, in the first place, when David Cameron proposed to make this referendum, uh, it was supposed to be a piece of cake. Like, of course, people would, um, would decide to stay uh, in the European Union. And it's very recently that this uh, actually changed and that... Uh, people and that can David Cameron so that it is um, that uh, people actually didn't feel so European. So moving to migration, we, uh, David Cameron also uh, stressed the fact that UK should uh, have the possibility to regulate its migration and to take the numbers of migration from hundreds of thousands to tens of thousands. And actually with the European Union and the recent migration crisis, this was actually impossible because um, the European Union 
um, and the fact that UK is in the European Union, union um, actually prevents UK from controlling its borders exactly the way it wanted to. And uh, we recently had uh, 330 thousands of people coming in UK. So if UK wanted to uh, regulate its migration the way it really wants to, uh, it would be uh, a far better thing for it to get out of the European Union. So I beg you to propose. Thank you. Now I'm calling the uh, second speaker of the op opposition team. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I will try to make some clarifications of the things that the government said uh, to us today. Basically, there are two points I want to tackle, two major points. And uh, the first point, and I think it came as a surprise for you as it was for me, uh, that it was said by the government, is that the European Union has failed. I don't think the European Union has failed, and uh, up to this point, the government didn't demonstrate that the European Union has failed. I will talk also about this a bit. And the second point is that it will be beneficial from an economical point of view, basically this is their main idea, that UK should leave the European Union. Okay, now let's look at the European Union, what does it mean, and how this European Union has failed. What is the European Union? It's one, if not the most powerful and the most important associations of countries in the world. First of all, it's a guarantee of peace in Europe. Second of all, Third of all, it's one of the biggest economic, economical associations in the world. Yeah? And fourth of all, it's one of the most important, if not the most important, geopolitical associations of countries in the world. It's balancing geopolitical powers across the world. This is what's European Union. Now, very briefly, what's your European Union for the UK? Very briefly, it's 50% exports and 50% imports, more or less. Not, these are not exact numbers. I think it's 43 and 51 point something. I think these are the numbers. But what it means, it means that half of the UK economy, it's linked with the European Union economy. It's linked with each of the countries of the European Union, different percentage, Germany, France, Italy, and, and so forth. Why it's so linked? Because we have this free trade association in the European Union. More or less, we have cultural as, uh, associations and we have a spirit of the European Union. Please? Yeah. Uh, actually, we saw the examples of uh, Norway and Switzerland, namely that oh. being out of the European Union doesn't actually prevent uh, countries from trading with the European Union. Okay, thanks. Uh, I don't say that going out of the European Union will uh, prevent UK from trading in the European Union in the future. The question what you should ask yourself and also uh, uh, people from UK should ask themselves in what percentage they are not going to be blocked. Are we still going to have the same half of the economy uh, participate in the economy the, with the EU? Okay, maybe we're not going to have this. We're going to have, I don't know how much, 5%, 10%? Maybe this is a question that the government should ask for. What will be the impact, the actual impact of this trade association, of this trade economic association that we have with the EU? And this is indeed the biggest question. But more than this, Putting all this together, and going back to the EU has failed. We had two examples, that the Syrian crisis and the refugee crisis, yeah? And of course we had other crises before, but what this means is that EU has, as a whole has issues, has problems, but together demonstrating solidarity within the European member states, we can solve these problems and we can go forward, yeah? The UK has earned a lot. Of course, it pays also a lot, but has earned a lot from the, um, uh, from the European Union and will continue to, uh, to earn a lot in the future as the European Union will uh, earn a lot from participating in an association with the UK. Going forward and looking at the different arguments that were exchanged during uh, this debate, it was uh, this example with Germany that the leader of the opposition presented uh, previously. Basically what we wanted to say there, there is no point of going out of the European Union to have other trades. As Germany is doing, UK can also do, uh, can also do the same. 
other words, we had this, this discussion about uh, the polls, different polls that are put in the UK of people wanting to leave European Union and, uh, and, or not. Actually, what we see is that as we're getting closer and more practical to this debate, people are realizing that the big part of their economy is tied to the European Union, and for this reason, they should not go out. Polls also show that uh, people who are owners of or companies and so forth do not want to go out of the European Union. Who are the people who want to go out? That's indeed the question. Maybe the government can answer that, and maybe the populist party from uh, UK can uh, take responsibility for these people. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not willing to go uh, into that uh, debate. <coughs> the question that we should ask overall, would it be better for the UK, for the people from UK and from people from Europe and the people from the world overall, would it be better if Europe, uh, if UK, we leave Europe or not. Thank you. Okay, now I'm opening the floor. So, who has questions? Uh, well, you said that the European Union managed to solve uh, the immigrant crisis. I don't uh, think so. And how can you explain? the fact that there were some states that didn't want it to, uh, to accept the number of immigrants imposed by the European Union. Thank you. Another question? Nobody else? Yes? Anna? Uh, do you think like, the fact that the United Kingdom is the only country in the uh, European Union that still have their own money, not the euro, have uh, an impact on, uh, on the independence thing? Thank you. Another question? Anybody? Only two questions about the issue? Yes? This gentleman, Anna, sorry. Yeah, we spoke a little bit about um, free trade agreements. I'd just like to hear from both teams. Um, when you see countries like the U.S. Um, moving towards signing free trade agreements with large regions of the world, such as the Transatlantic Investment Partnership with the EU and also the Trans-Pacific Partnership with Asia, why do you think if the U.K. leaves the EU that countries like the U.S. are going to sign separate free trade agreements with only the U.K. Thanks. Anybody else? Nobody? No other questions? Only three questions on the, uh, this uh, topic. So now I'm calling the last speaker of the opposition team. Um, I'm first going to take uh, questions. Uh, so, one question was, um, how did we, could we say that the immigrant problem was resolved? We never mentioned that. We said that uh, we are going towards a solution for the migrants, and it is not by separating that we're going to actually find a solution. Um, second, about the fact that the UK is the only country with our, with, that's out of the Eurozone, it's one of the nine other countries that are out of the Eurozone. So this is a, a, a political decision that has to be taken, that cannot be pushed to the country. Um, now to uh, go back to our debate, um, I would first like to um, answer a couple of points that were said by uh, the proposition at the first. Uh, so you said that uh, the European Union was a failure. Um, I totally disagree, and I would have liked to answer that, but we didn't really mention where it failed. So uh, I would have preferred to, to have a bit arguments be uh, behind that. So I don't think that there are, if you didn't give any arguments, because, probably because there wasn't any. 
Um, and then uh, you said that we are not finding any solutions about the migrants and we're talking about it more and more. Um, well, this is what is called democracy and not dictatorship. That's why it takes time to actually discuss. Um, then you said that 43% uh, wanted to go out of the European Union, then it's decreasing. Well, this is actually how things happen, you know. First, people want to scare a little bit because they want things to move, and then they realize that there might be actually a risk, and then they start to be scared, and they start to change their mind, and that's actually what we're seeing. Uh, I can't take pause of affirmations. Uh, so if I want to come back to what we're defending, we had actually our basic arguments was that it will be an economical catastrophe for the UK for them to go out of the uh, European Union. Uh, that's as much for uh, the trades that they can have with uh, outside countries that we saw that it's very linked to Europe. Um, but it will also be uh, very bad for the cultural uh, the, the cultural and the spiritual European association that we have been building uh, through many years. We have Scotland that might leave the UK. Uh, we'll have uh, Ireland that will be again split. Northern, uh, Southern Ireland will have like again a border between the two. Um, so it's um, we we built the uh, European Union, uh, European Union as a family to be solid. Yes, we've had problems. Yet it's not always easy. However. When we're in a family, when somebody has a problem, we don't kick them out and we don't just run away every time there's a problem. We try to resolve it together. And that was the whole aim of having a union and that's why it should stay like that. And to, that will, will be the only way for and the countries of the European Union and the UK to be able to advance. Thank you very much. And now I'm calling the last speaker of the uh, proposition team. Always one more point. Good evening, Madam Moderator, members of the Opposition and my members of the Proposition. Uh, the motion before us here tonight is, of course, that this House believes that the United Kingdom should leave the European Union. Before getting into our substantive arguments, I'd like to take a run around the questions that were just posed by the audience. Uh, sir in the front mentioned the European Union's handling of the Syrian and migration crisis. Absolutely agree, sir. That event, tragic as it is, exposed quite clearly the fact that the European Union the union part is, in fact, a fallacy. We have separate countries with separate agendas. We have a government in Brussels, but when things get difficult, it starts to pull apart. So in the back row, uh, as was mentioned by my colleague on the opposition, you did indeed make a mistake in your interpretation. Um, what my what the speaker who just departed mentioned was that they, they have not tried to push the currency on any country. In fact, that's not strictly accurate. It has always been, or for a long time, it has been a condition of entry for new countries that they must adopt the euro. Um, and the third point by the gentleman in the, in the middle about the why should the U.S., to take one example, uh, choose to negotiate with Britain as a single country when the trend is, of course, towards trans-regional agreements as in the Pacific. Well, the simple answer, sir, is that negotiation with Britain for the U.S. is a much faster and much more efficient process than it is with the European Union. Far easier to get agreement with one country than, in this case, with uh, 27, 28. Now, ladies and gentlemen, coming back to the arguments that were presented by my own team here this evening, uh, to put it into summary, there are two main blocks where we feel that the European, that UK must leave the European Union or should leave the European Union. One is the economic argument, as ably put forward by our first speaker, that the European Union has not performed well uh, since the financial crisis, and the EU has in many sense been... Uh, tied on to that, that we've seen growth in other parts of the world accelerating far faster than happened in the European Union. We believe that the time has come for the United Kingdom to have the freedom to be able to um, negotiate unilaterally, to participate in trade agreements without necessarily bringing forward the, the agreement of all of the European member states. Um, and the second point is cultural, uh, that the the idea of Euroscepticism is in fact growing in the UK. Historically, it has been a separate entity. Uh, we are physically separate from the rest of Europe. Ladies and gentlemen, it's simply easier for the UK to step out and say that they're no longer part of the European Union with their history, 
with their geography, it's far easier for them to do so than, for example, it would be for Luxembourg or Belgium. Uh, the UK has already stepped out of Schengen, or in fact never joined Schengen. This would simply be another step along the same road. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what the opposition have chosen to focus on tonight is the economic argument. They've tried to convince you that it would be economic catastrophe for Britain if it were to leave the European Union. And it's a pity that they chose to do that because that argument is completely based on a fallacy. Okay? It's based on a fallacy that the European Union, the countries that remain in the European Union, would be a closed market. So yes, of course we agree that a huge proportion of Britain's exports, the figure quoted was 50%, are going to the European Union. 50% are coming in as imports. And there is no reason, ladies and gentlemen, to think that that will stop in the, event of the European, in the event of the United Kingdom leaving the European Union. Yes, it will require a fresh negotiation, but the mechanism for doing that is there. Article 50 of the Treaty of the European Union states that when a country <coughs> chooses to leave, that is put as a, as a proposal to the Commission, a withdrawal agreement is then made. That withdrawal agreement then covers things, or would potentially cover things, because this is an unprecedented situation, like trade agreements, like freedom of movement, like freedom of capital, etc., etc., etc. This has been done outside the European Union. Uh, my colleague in the opposition, again, tried to convince you that the European Union is responsible for the lack of borders between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. Unfortunately, that again was incorrect. In fact, those borders existed long after both the Republic of Ireland and the United Kingdom were part of the, the European Union. They came down after the 1998 Good Friday Agreement, uh, ratified by a referendum in the, in the UK and Northern Ireland. So uh, to summarize in my, my remaining minutes, ladies and gentlemen, do not accept the bare facts or the, the bare argument that was put forward by the opposition that by stepping out of the European Union, the UK is condemning itself to poverty and in fact is turning its back on Europe. What we have tried to convince you, ladies and gentlemen, is that the focus of the European Union needs to be addressing the big challenges, okay? It needs to be addressing things like refugees, like growing its own economy, all the rest of it. And it's difficult to do that while there are still these open questions about uh, how much does Britain pay, how much subsidy do French farmers get, etc. It's a benefit of the European Union to let Britain step out. Okay? The benefit to Britain is that they step out and then step up in their negotiation with other countries. Ladies and gentlemen, we are arguing that there is no point being part of an arguing family. It's much, much better to be a good neighbour. And that is what we propose as the future for Britain and European relations. Thank you.